the final and best way of styling your web pages with CSS is called external CSS. So we've talked about inline CSS, internal CSS, and now we're going to do some external CSS. So if internal CSS is included within the HTML page, external CSS means it is outside of the HTML document or independent of the HTML document. So create a new page, a new file called external.html, and we're going to copy that basic structure again. Paste it in there and change that title. And what we're going to do now is just add some basic markup first. I'm going to add a level one heading and say external CSS. This page is styled using external CSS. It's the way to go. And I'm going to wrap this external CSS in a strong tag because why not? And then let's just say another paragraph tag. There are three ways to style a web page. And let's do the ordered list inline CSS, internal CSS, and external CSS. Okay. Let's actually change this to a level two heading. And we'll just say three ways to style a web page. There we go. So here's our basic markup over here, our, our HTML. It's very simple. And now what we're going to do is create a new file. So new file and call it, well, we can give it any name as long as the extension is .css. So let's just say style.css. Okay, go back to your external .html and in the head tag, we need to add a link tag. Now a link tag is self-closing and we need to add a few attributes. The first attribute that you should add, and now they could be in any order, but I usually like doing this one first. It is rel, and rel stands for relationship, and is basically telling the page uh, what is the relationship between this page and the page you're linking. And the relationship is a style sheet. So you're trying to link a style sheet to this HTML page. The next one is type. It's not a required attribute, but it's usually good practice to add it. And this would be text slash CSS. So what is the media type of the linked document? And the last one that you should add is href. And you need to link the style sheet. So here we are, style.css. And because it, the style sheet is in the same directory as the web page here, we don't need to add any more to the URL. So now the style sheet is officially linked to our HTML. So you guessed it. All you got to do now is add some styles in your style.css. So here we go. Let's start off and say body. Let's go ahead and say the background. Well, let's say background color is, well, let's go for gray. Now, here's a quick note. You can do colors here. You could do straight colors like, uh, well, here's a good one, aqua, or you could do something like orange or olive. But you can also do um, what's called hex codes. And in HTML, they basically look, if you're a designer, you'll recognize these. It's something like this. Or like that. And these are basically just the hex code version of a color. And sometimes a, the, the, the color name, like olive, uh, you want a little bit uh, different of that color. You want something very specific that you say designed in Photoshop or the brand doesn't match dark olive green or drab olive or whatever the colors are. And you want to actually use the exact code. And that's where you'd use the exact code. 
And you can get those in Photoshop using the color picker and that will tell you the, th the six digit uh, hex code and you can use that for your colors. Now I'm gonna say color and this will be for the actual text. Uh, I'm gonna say 333. There we go. Now I'm gonna style the level one heading and say something like font size, 50 pixels, font family, let's say Helvetica, and it's always good to have a fallback, so this is called a font stack. So Arial and then sans serif. Basically what this tells the browser is look for Helvetica. If the user doesn't have Helvetica on their machine, fall back to Arial. If it doesn't have Arial, then just choose any sans serif font that the user has on their machine. That's called a font stack. And now let's, uh, let's style the level two heading. Let's give it a similar style. Let's say font size, 30 pixels, and font family. Let's go for Georgia, and then times, and then serif. So that's another font stack. What we're doing is looking for Georgia. If they don't have Georgia, fall back to times. If they don't have times, fall back to just any serif font. And because you, uh, you have a knowledge of design, you know what sans serif means and serif means. And now we're gonna style that paragraph tag up there. And let's just say font size, 18 pixels, font style. Whoops, style, italic. There we go. And then uh, let's style that uh, that unordered list there. Or sorry, that's an ordered list. And we will say margin 20. And that's giving margin on all sides there. And then we'll say padding 20. And padding on all sides. And let's give it a color too. Why not? White. Good enough. There we go. So now we have our external CSS right here, totally separate from the external.html, but it is linked right here in the head tag with the link tag, and it is linked up to our style sheet, and now we could do anything in this style sheet to style our entire web page. So that's the basics of CSS and getting everything linked up. Remember, you should always use external CSS whenever possible, which is almost always and you should try and avoid using inline or internal CSS simply because it is not best practice. Now we're gonna move forward into some more CSS. We have a lot more to cover, so hang tight and see you soon. Mm -hmm.